Hi, my name is Stuart Lowe and I am a Splunk Consultant and SOAR Certified Automation Developer here at Summerford Associates. This is the second of a series of short videos on Splunk SOAR and today I'm going to talk about how security orchestration is achieved. In Splunk SOAR, apps allow us to orchestrate our security functions by connecting and integrating security tools and providing the ability to programmatically coordinate security actions. There are over 350 apps in the SOAR app library, which can be explored further in Splunkbase and GitHub, spanning a wide variety of popular technologies with out-of-the-box orchestration capabilities. Each SOAR app is essentially a Python module that contains all of the code necessary to authenticate and take action on another technology or service. In most cases, SOAR apps accomplish this using technology APIs, but connections using SSH or Windows Remote Management, among others, is also possible. If you are using proprietary in-house toolage, it is possible to create a SOAR app that will integrate with that tool. SOAR has extensive documentation to go with a custom app wizard that walks you through configuring the app's metadata, resulting in a pre-formatted JSON file and about 80% of the Python code needed for your app. All that remains is to write the API calls and ensure data returned is formatted correctly. SOAR app source code is also available on GitHub or can be downloaded from Splunkbase enabling you to modify the apps as desired and even submit a proposed improvement or update. It is worth noting that 30% of SOAR apps are community contributions and new apps are being published all the time. Each app contains a series of actions that allow SOAR to perform tasks on the target technology or service. The Microsoft Office 365 app, for example, has actions that allow you to perform tasks including querying a mailbox for a specific email, copying an email, or deleting an email from a user's mailbox. Cisco ASA, on the other hand, provides an entirely different set of actions such as block IP or terminate session, among others. Detailed documentation is available for each app, detailing expected parameters required for each action and the values that will be returned. In sort, action names are standardized across all apps and technologies. A block IP action in the Cisco ASA app is also a block IP action in the Palo Alto firewall app. This is particularly useful during playbook creation as a user can select the relevant action name and choose which app or asset should perform that action. Writing playbooks will be a topic for a different video. Each app can be configured with one or more assets, which could be a service in the case of VirusTotal or a device such as a firewall. Assets in SOAR are where we can find the configurations for an app using one set of configurations per asset that allow us to define the specific details needed to communicate with that technology or service. For example, integration with Cisco ASA requires a device IP or host name and a username and password. Other assets may only require an API key. In the asset configuration, we can also define very granular role-based permissions on a per access basis. Assets configured with no approvers will execute immediately which would likely be acceptable for a URL or domain reputation action. A write action performed on an asset such as a firewall requires approval, and this is handled by a primary, secondary, and executive approval escalation path. For example, if an asset requires two primary approvers, if only one responds in time, the second approval is delegated to the secondary tier, and so on. If you would like to know more about Splunk SOAR and how it can help improve your organization's efficiency, productivity and security posture, then please get in touch with us at info at Thank you for watching.